Hello, in this video I'm gonna walk you through the financial model Excel template. I will show you the main inputs, the core outputs, reports and charts. So let's get started. On the dashboard you can set up the core inputs, timing assumptions, debt assumptions, equity waterfall assumptions, Review the core financials by years and the profitability chart by years. So let's start the setup of the model from the timing assumptions. So first of all, once you click on each yellow cell, you will see the notification window with information of what you are supposed to input here. I believe it will help you to navigate across the model easily and will help you to understand model more. So let's start from the acquisition date. Let's pretend it will be April 20. The next date is operation start date, which means that the first date where your hotel will start uh, bringing the revenue. Let's pretend it, it will be the next month, which is May 20. The next uh, is to set up your whole period and months, and the sale date will be the output, which is depending on the acquisition date plus 115 months, will be calculated the sale date. Let's pretend the whole period is, for example, 80 months. You may see your 10 years model for last three years is gray now, so you should not input any assumptions here because it will not impact the model uh, because the hotel will be sold in December 26. If you'll put, for example, had it in 10, so the sale date will be June 29. It means that you should input all these yellow cells. The next step is to set up the count of rooms in your hotel. Let's pretend it will be 300, for example. The next step is to set up the occupancy by years. For example, for the first year it can be 70% and each next year it will be 1% more. Like this. The next step is to set up the average daily rate per room, for example, $100 and plus five dollars each next year. You can input also food and beverage revenue per room per month, ten dollars for example, and other revenue per room, for example, seven dollars. This grows per one dollar each next year. This is monthly for other revenue per room, by the way. So you can see the next two lines with outputs, which is revenue per available room and total revenue per available room, depending on this occupancy and food and beverage and other revenue. Also, you have occupancy wrap up here, six months, for example, but you can set up three months. It means that first month will be 33%, the next month will be 67% and starting from month number three will be 100% of your uh, average occupancy, which you set up here by years. So the next step is to set up your reserves for replacement, for example, 3% each year. This is, will be calculated as a percentage of revenue each month. You will see also here debt service coverage ratio, which is calculated based on revenue, based on expenses assumptions and based on the debt assumptions, which I will explain a bit more. The next step you can input the purchase price of the hotel, for example 2 million or 1.5 million, whatever number you need. Loan to value ratio, 50% for example, occupancy ramp up, I just explained it. Then you can input exit cap rate, 7% for example, your sales expenses, 5%. You will see the sales price calculated depending on the exit cap rate and you will see depending on the sales expense, the amount of the sales expense and your net sales price. So below you may see the core financials. So once you input all the seasonality, wages and expenses line items, you may see your EBDA and net income and review the profitability chart, which will show you the departmental revenue, EBGA and EBGA percentage. On the top right section of the dashboard, you have equity waterfall with IRR hurdles, assumptions and outputs. 
So you have four sections here, equity contributions, promote structure, partnership level returns and property metrics. So under equity contributions, you should set up the allocation between general partners, investors and limited partners, investors contributions. So let's pretend general partners, investors share is 5% and other 95% is for limited partners. To the right, you may see the calculation of amounts for these contributions. On the next section, you can input the promote structure assumptions, which is hurdle 2, 3 and 4 IRR. So let's pretend for hurdle 2, there are hurdle with the 7%, hurdle 3, 12 and 16 for hurdle number 4. And you have the GP promote, depending on hurdle. 5%, 10 and 15 for example. So you may see to the right how this promote impacts the shares of general partner and limited partner. So for the hurdle one you have 5 and 95 which is equity contribution share. For the hurdle two you have 9.8 and 90.3%, 14.5, 85.5, and 80.8 percentage. The next section will show you the partnership level returns, which is cash outflow or cash uh, contributions, which is the same amount 28 and 536 thousands here. You can see the profit broken down by limited partner and general partner, the IRR percentage and multiple on investment capital or equity multiple. You can see also some property metrics for the acquisition and exit, like purchase price per room and total, purchase price less debt proceeds per room and total, exit sales price per room and total, and finally net sales proceeds per room and total as well. On the equity waterfall tab, you may see all the calculations by months for the equity contributions, promote structure, so you can see the net cash flow for distribution, summary of investor level returns by months, Return of capital and hurdle or preferred return, hurdle 2 calculation, hurdle 3 calculation, hurdle 4, some return matrix and some risk matrix. On the KPI step, you may see the main investors' KPIs and outputs, which are partnership level returns, property matrix, property level return matrix and sensitivity analysis. Under partnership level returns, all KPIs broken down by limited partner and general partner KPIs. You may see the cash outflow or cash contributions, profit, IRR percentage and multiple on investment capital or equity multiple. Under property matrix, you may see the acquisition and exit KPIs, which are purchase price per room and total purchase price less debt proceeds per room and total, the sales price per room and total, and net sales proceeds also per room and total. Under property level return matrix, you may see the KPIs broken down by unlevered and levered cash flow, which are IRR percentage, multiple on investment capital, total cash invested, total revenue, total profit, and cash on cash return or average free and clear return. On the sensitivity analysis tab, you may see the different scenarios of your metrics like IRR, multiple on investment capital and profit depending on different hold periods and exit cap rates. So these yellow cells are changeable, for example you may say the middle point for your hold period 80 months, so you will have scenarios for hold period 56 months, 68 months, 80 months, 92 and 104 months. Also you can set the middle point for your exit cap rate, for example 6%, so you will have scenarios for 2, 4, 6, 8 and 10% of exit cap rate. On the sensitivity tab you may see the values for your IRR depending on these exit cap rates and hold periods. If you would like you may see the profit amount. 
Let's give a couple of seconds to update this tab. So you may see different profit amounts depending on the exit cap rate and hold period. Also on the top left cell you may see the profit calculated by the model. The same way you have multiple on investment capital scenarios. So you can see the value calculated by the model and different scenario assumptions and outputs. On the income statement tab, you may see the main line items for your profit and loss, which is departmental revenue, which includes rooms revenue, food and beverage revenue, and other revenue, departmental expenses, rooms expenses, food and beverage expenses, and other expenses, total departmental profit, then you have undistributed expenses section, which includes salaries and wages and other dis undistributed expenses. Then you have gross operating profit, management expenses, total fixed expenses, your EBJ, total depreciation and amortization, reserves for replacement, EBIT, interest expenses, net operating income, gain loss on sale and net income. Also, each section, as you may see, have this plus button. You may click on this plus button and see the detailed breakdown of each section by its subcategories, for example, like for departmental revenue and for departmental expenses. On the cash flow tab, you may see the operating activities, investing activities and financing activities broken down by subcategories and broken down by months. On the cash flow statement, in a direct method, you may see the same operating, investing financing activities, but in more collapsed form, which is easier to review. And on the balance sheet, you may see the main current assets, non-current assets, current liabilities, non-current liabilities, and your equity. The summary of these three statements you may see on the summary tab, where you can see the income statement is the main PL line items for the 10 years. And here you may select specific year and see this year by months. The same information you may see on the charts below. Also, you may see the balance sheet with the main KPIs for the 10 years and for the selected year broken down by months with the charts and the cash flow statement also broken down by 10 years and for the specific year broken down by months. On the top revenue tab, you may see the revenue breakdown by three main revenue streams, which are rooms revenue, food and beverage revenue, and other revenue. Also, you may see the breakdown of absolute values by years and percentage allocation by years. The same information you may see on the charts below, where you may see the percentage breakdown and absolute values breakdown by years. The next set of charts will show you the revenue debts and monthly run rate for the specific year. So you can select, for example, 2022 and see the absolute values of revenue breakdown and percentage allocation on the pie chart. On the revenue bridge, you may see the main drivers of your revenue growth between these two years. So, for example, I can set 2021 till 2028. And you may see on the left side total revenue for the 2021. On the right side, total revenue for the 2028 and the main drivers of revenue growth, which is rooms revenue, food and beverage revenue and other revenue and absolute values of this revenue growth. On the top expenses tab, you may see top four expense line items and all other expenses collapsed into one line, which is other here. Also, you may see the absolute values breakdown by 10 years and percentage allocation broken down by 10 years. The same information you may see on the charts below, where you may see the percentage allocation and absolute values allocation by main expense categories. On the expenses depths and on monthly run rate chart, you may see the specific year broken down by absolute values on the charts on the left side and percentage allocation on the pie chart. On the expenses bridge, you may see the main drivers of your expense growth. For example, I can select 2022 to 2027. And on the left side, I may see the total expenses for 2022. On the right side, I may see the total expenses for 2027. 
and in between you may see the main drivers of this expense growth. Just sellers and wages in this case, property tax, lease and rental expense, interest expense and other with absolute values on this chart. On the chart step you may see the charts with the main model outputs or KPIs which are net operating income broken down by months for the 10 years, the EBJ breakdown, which is blue line and its components, which is departmental revenue, departmental expenses, salaries and wages, unstructured expenses, management fees and fixed expenses. Then you can see the operating cash flow broken down by cash inflow and cash outflow by months, your average occupancy rate, your revenue breakdown by rooms revenue, food and beverage revenue and other revenue. And the main revenue KPIs you may see on the last chart, which are revenue per available room and total revenue per available room, broken down by months. The color coding in the model is very simple. You may change any yellow cell in any yellow sheet within the model. This means that this yellow cell has some input, assumption or driver which impacts the calculation within the model. Blue sheets means that on these sheets there are some charts, reports and other information which can be useful for reporting purposes. On the tabs without color you have some extra calculations related to revenue, to debts, equity, inventory and everything which is needed for the report, reporting. Additionally, you have Contents tab, which allow you to navigate across the model very simple. So you may click on any report and you can go back. It is broken down by reports, assumptions, statements and setup. There is short explanation about what each tab does. But if you want to know more, you can go to How To and to see more detailed, ex detailed explanation of what each tab does and what inputs you may find on this sheet and what kind of outputs you may find on, th on this sheet as well. Any header of this section is also clickable. So you may click on, for example, book assets and you go directly to this tab. On the seasonality tab, you may input your room occupancy rate seasonality factors. So here you may see this yellow line. Let me explain how it works. So this factor works as an adjustment. So for example, if we set up on the dashboard the average occupancy for the year, 70% for example, if I'll put minus 5% for January, this means that I will have 65% of occupancy for the January. If February minus 3% for example, then 67. This works in the same way for all other months. On the chart below you may see the seasonality factor adjustment. Also here we have the gray section with the calculation of actual occupancy by months and years. As we also set up on the dashboard July as a start of operational period. All the months before July 20 have zero occupancy obviously. You have some ramp up period on the dashboard. It, it, it is shown here. This means that only in December which is month number seven starting from the operational start date you have the full uh, ramp up and you may see the impact of the occupancy factor on each of the months by years and by months as well. On the DUM expenses sheet you can input your departmental and distributed and management expenses. So let's go one by one under departmental expenses assumption sections, you have three categories, rooms expenses, food and beverage expenses, and other expenses by default. But you can also rename, you can type any name you would like. Uh, here you may see the approach of how it will be calculated. So for rooms revenue, it will be calculated as a percentage of rooms revenue. For food and beverage expenses, it will be calculated as a percentage of food and beverage revenue. And for other expenses, it will be calculated as a percentage of other revenue. You also have notification in these yellow cells. 
of what you're supposed to input. So you can input, for example, 3, 4, 5, 5, 5, 6, 6, 6, 7, 7 percent. Or keep it steady across all the years, for example, 7 percent, like here. Under undistributed expenses assumptions, you have 15 categories. Some of them are defined, but you can change the names as well. For example, instead of utilities, you can type other undistributed expenses or any other name you would like. The idea is the same, but all undistributed expenses will be calculated as a percentage of total departmental revenue, which is a total of rooms revenue, food and beverage revenue and other revenue. The same idea for management expenses, you have four different approaches here as a percentage of total departmental revenue, as a percentage of rooms revenue, and as a percentage of food and beverage revenue, and finally as a percentage of other revenue. By default you have management fee as a one line, but if you have different approaches for the calculation of management fee, you can use up to eight different lines here. So below you have the basis for the calculation of all three categories of expenses, which is revenue, broken down by rooms, food and beverage and other. Then you have departmental expenses, byline items and by months, and distributed expenses, byline items and by months, and management fees. Finally, in income statement under departmental expenses, other undistributed expenses and management fees, you can see the detailed breakdown with line items and with the digitalization by months. On the fixed expenses tab, you have 25 placeholders to set up your fixed expenses line items. So let me show you how it works. First of all, in the categories column, you need to input the name of this fixed expenses line item, for example, utilities. Next column is launch or start date. By default, this is connected to the operation start date on the dashboard, but you can change it as well. For example, December 20. The end date is also connected to the sales date on the dashboard, but you can change it. For example, January 29. Then you have eight different periodicity approaches. So let me show you how it works one by one. For example, one time spending of $1,000. So obviously, if you select it one time, you don't need end date, just one date and one spending. So we have in December 20, $1,000. The next, you can select the daily basis and you will have $31,000 because in December you have 31 day. Then January 31,000 again, February is 28,000, etc. till the January 29. The January 29 is the last date when you have this category of fixed expenses. Another option is weekly. In this case, you will have four payments each month, four thousands per month. If you will select be weekly, you will have two payments roughly each month. So this, in this case, you will have two thousand dollars. In case of monthly, you will have steady one thousand dollars per month till the end, which is January 29. In case of quarterly, you will have one payment per quarter starting from December 20. As you may see here, if you will select semi-annually, you will have one payment per each half a year starting from December 20. And the last approach is yearly, you will have one thousand dollar each year in December. Additional cool thing which you have in the model, this is yearly growth rate. For example, if I will select monthly, August 20, for example, and I want to add 5% of growth the next year, then 4% into 2022 and 2% each next year. So you may see that started from January 21, you will have instead of $1,000, $1,050. Then, in January 22, within the year, you'll have $1,092. And etc. till the end of the model. So you'll have steady growth of this fixed expense by years. And finally, in income statement, in the fixed expenses category, you will see the breakdown 
of your fixed expenses by land items and by months as well. On the wages tab you have 19 placeholders to set up your staffing assumptions. So let me show you how it works. On the categories column you need to set up the position name, for example CEO. The hire date by default is connected to the operation start date on the dashboard and fire date is connected to the sales date on the dashboard as well. But if you need you can use the drop down to select the needed date. For example for CEO the hire date will be May and the fire will be still the sales date. Then you need to input the annual base salary, for example $50,000. The next step is to set up your a monthly bonus, for example 5%, and payroll tax rate, for example 12%. In the next section you can input the staff count or FT count, so it will be one, for example, across all the years. Let me give you another example, for example manager. I want to start hiring in September 20 and June 28 will be the last date or fire date. So you may see immediately 29 is gray here, so you don't need to input any FTEs here. So the annual base can be for example $40,000 with 3% of monthly bonus with the same 12% tax rate. You want to hire 2 in 2020, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12 and steady 12 till the end of the model. So additionally you are able to set up the annual salary rise position or annual salary growth. It can be for example 5% across all the years. So below you may see the calculation of your annual salary depending on annual base and depending on the salary rise percentage. Below you may see the total headcount calculation or total FT calculation by months calculation of salaries by months, bonuses by months, and payroll taxes. And finally, in income statement, under salaries and wages category, you may see the breakdown of your salaries and wages by positions and the amounts by months. On the top right corner of the dashboard, you have three placeholders for the debt assumptions. So first line item is predefined for the acquisition loan, how it works. So you have purchase price here, which is 1 million, for example, and LTV, which is loan to value ratio, 60% in this case. So the amount will be 1 million multiplied by 60%, which is $600,000. Then you have launch date, which is connected to the acquisition date, which is February 20, can be changed as well. So these three sales are predefined and you should not change the formulas here. So you can set up for the acquisition loan full term, for example 105 months is the interest only period where you can pay only interest and no repayments on the main amount. Five, you can set up the interest which is annual interest rate 12% and you can select one of the two debt types which is usual or annuity. Also you have two line items to set up another loans, for example loan construction. So you can input some amount, $100,000, you can set up the launch date, April 20 for example, full term 60 months, zero interest only period, you can set up 6% annual interest rate and type annuity for example. So in, in the income statement you can see the interest expense calculation. On the cash flow you may see interest paid and you may see the total debt drop downs and total debt repayments. And on the balance sheet you may see the total debts closing book value. On the assets tab you have up to seven placeholders for different assets categories with purchase date, category name, asset cost and useful time and years. 
Two of the categories are predefined, which are land cost and building cost. These two categories are linked to the dashboard in terms of purchase date, so it is linked to the acquisition date. And the asset cost we can break down using this percentage of purchase price. So for example, land cost is 30% of your purchase price. And knowing that on the dashboard we set 1 million as a purchase price, we have a calculation that 300,000 this is land cost and 700,000 this is building cost. Obviously, for the land cost, there is no depreciation calculation, so useful time in years is gray cell and this is zero. Uh, for the building cost, you can set up useful time in years, for example, 30. And you may see the calculation below that in here you have the capital expenditure for the land cost. Here you have the capital expenditure for the building cost and the depreciation for the building cost. In the same way, you can set up, for example, other assets with asset cost of $100,000 with useful time 10 years. So in here you have asset category 3 and here you have the February. You can change it for example to April. So you have this capital expenditure in April and you can see the depreciation calculation and closing net book value. As a result of total depreciation you may see in income statement under a BDA. On the cash flow you may see the fixed asset capital expenditure by months and on the balance sheet you may see the fixed assets closing net book value. On the top of the dashboard you have currency and denominator assumptions. So let me show you how it works. First of all you have a section with currency inputs and currency outputs. If you would like to see all the model assumptions and outputs in the same currency, for example in United States dollars, you can just keep default values and keep exchange rate as a default as well. But for example if you would like to input all the assumptions in United States dollars and see the outputs in euros, you need to input the currency exchange rate in this case. This can be 1.2 for example. So what happens? In all the reports now you can see the numbers in euros. The same for charts and all statements like income statement, cash flow, balance sheet and all other reports. Another cool option is to use denominator. By default you have 1000. What does it mean? It means that for the all reports and charts you have $1000 as a denomination. It means that this is in thousand dollars or euros in this case. But if you would like to see it in millions, you can just change this denomination and instead of thousands, you will see millions. You can use just one and you will see in dollars. So no denomination applied. I hope you enjoyed my video. Thanks for reviewing this. Uh, you can find more on my website finmodelslab.com and we'll see you later in the next videos.